Okay, so we want to take a look at doing a VDI holder such as this one. This one would mount on the uh, VDI disk turret, basically on the face of the turret. So this was a solid model that was actually downloaded from the machining cloud. And uh, in the machining cloud, uh, just a quick overview here, you can go to whatever builder you would like, so Walter, and then search for a tool and then you can come into the different categories, uh, you know, basically and select uh, different products or different uh, solid models if they exist and they're uploaded in the machining cloud. But basically any of these, you know, holders that you see here, um, as long as there's a solid model, you would see this, um, if you click on here, you would see this 3D rendered model uh, active. So you could go ahead and grab any models that are inside the machining cloud as well. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to do this particular holder here. So the first thing is we want to make sure that the orientation is correct. So when we look at uh, tool holders, we always want the Z vector, the blue Z vector, pointing into the turret the way that it would mount and this face here would mount up against the uh, face of the turret. Now the other thing, uh, this is correct, so these, this orientation is already correct. We have the blue vector is normal to this mounting face. And it is also centered, it appears, uh, about this cylinder. So um, one thing that we can do is we can grab one of these solid faces and we can pick a line Z and what that will do on the home tab, uh, you have these align, you can hit the little down arrow down here and pick a line Z. And if you hit a line Z, that will automatically center the axis of your choice about this cylindrical face. So uh, what we now want to look at is if this was mounted on the face of the turret with my tool coming down toward my main spindle over here, uh, we have our X axis pointing up toward the center of the turret. Um, what I think would be the best thing here is that if we rotate and have this tool in alignment with the x-axis pointing the other direction. So what we want to do is have the default position like this. So we're going to go ahead and select the solid, right click, say copy, and we're going to say rotate and we want to rotate this 180 degrees. We're going to move and do 180 and we can leave that or we can uncheck it and pick the z-axis. Uh, they'll both do the same thing. So when I say OK, we now have um, the tapered portion of the holder pointing up toward the middle of the turret and this is going to face down toward the main spindle here. So uh, we're done with the orientation portion. At this point now, we want to create a place where our tool would appear. And you can see here that the tool pocket for my square shank is located at the center line already, uh, which is typically the case for these types of holders. And what I like to do uh, is I like to use the geometry and then rectangle command. It's very easy. I'll just pick this outside corner, one of these outside corners. Let's say this one, since it's the full outside corner. This one looks like it's a little bit short here. So if I pick this outside corner, and then I pick this inside corner of that tool block, that tool stopper, uh, what I have now is a 3D cube. And this 3D cube is going to basically represent uh, this midpoint for me on where I need to move my UVW to get this tool mounting position. So the first thing that I want to do is maybe just uh, translate my uh, uh, work plane to this position. So we can do that. Uh, we can do that by just coming over here to the home command and coming to this command and picking this little uh, down arrow 
And here we can select a number of different commands. We're going to go ahead and pick translate. I'm going to pick this center point. So you see as I move my mouse, it's going to give me that highlight. And then what we want to do is just reorient this guy however we want. And uh, we can do that using the rotate UVW command. So here, uh, what we want to do first is rotate about Y. This is going to be the first vector that we rotate about a negative 90 degree to get our Z to point upward. And then what we want to do is rotate 180 about Z because our X will be pointing in the wrong direction. So when I click on this icon, the first thing it's going to ask down here at the lower left is what is the angle about U? We're going to say 0, and then we're going to say minus 90, and then we're going to say 180. And that's going to get our vector to be in the correct orientation to mount my lathe tool. Now, um, at this point, we have our vectors correct, our location correct, and we can now save a new work plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this tool adapter, TA underscore 1. And we're going to do another one. And this one we're going to call HA for holder adapter underscore 1. So why did we create two UVWs here? So one is in a spree, it's going to generate the tool, and it's going to generate the tool at the midpoint of your basically your Z vector. So this tool will be created at the midpoint of the Z, starting at the center line and going the opposite direction. So that square shank will fill up this pocket, and it will start at this point and go opposite to the Z vector down here with my insert for OD turning pointed along and toward in the same direction as the X, the red X. But the HA is if I have some uh, square shank specific solid model holder. So we have a, a tool holder here, but I might have a square shank holder that I might want to stick in here that has a, uh, you know, a custom, uh, you know, configuration to it that I want to have in here that the Esprit Tools um, automatically generated shank does not match. So that can be placed into this pocket because I now have this HA here as well. So at this point we're ready to go ahead and save out this tool holder and um, we can come up here to file and we can do save as and we can come here to pick a holder file. So let's see how it works on the machine. So here we have a Herco TM8 and this machine has a, a VDI disk type turret with already a lot of tools mounted on there. So coming here and uh, looking here at station five, we have an open position. So we're gonna come, I'll turn this machine off here, the outside sheet metal, just so we can see that position a little bit more easily. Right click, say add adaptive item. So under Walter Tools, I have a folder for turning and then one for VDI. And here's the, here's the GDML that we just created. I changed some of the colors uh, on mine just so it looks a little bit more uh, interesting. So I'm going to say open. And you'll see inside you can see the Z and the X that we were paying attention to when we decided to uh, create you know, the orientation of that holder. We can see that the Z is going in toward the turret face and the X is pointing down. So when you load your uh, holder, that orientation is going to determine how the holder is loaded onto the turret. And then here we can just say, okay, right click on that adaptive item and then I'm gonna pick a turning tool. So when I pick a turning, uh, we'll come in here and this you can see here in the nomenclature for the Walter tool, the holder, uh, you can see it's a VDI 30 with a 20 millimeter pocket. And here uh, we have, you know, 0.787. I have this in, in inch uh, right here. It's inch. 
So you can see I've got 0 0.787, 0 0.787, and then I put 0.787 for the length from the insert there from the face. So uh, you can see there that uh, you know you can change this if you want to, to one inch or something, whatever. So uh, that is uh, how the tool will come in. You can see that it comes in at the midpoint along the Z, and then it extends from the center point over to the edge. And we have our tool coming down with the insert that is going to match up with the red X axis. So that is all, folks. Uh, that is how to create a simple square shank tool holder for a uh, face-mounted VDI turret. Hopefully this helps you build more accurate simulations.